Thank you, ladies. We'll be seeing them all weekend. If you guys want to open in your Bibles to um, where to go, Here's, uh, Deuteronomy six four through nine is where we're going to hang out. If you don't know where Deuteronomy is, it's the fifth book of the Bible. Before it, Deuteronomy. If you've gone to Joshua, you have gone too far. If you're in Genesis, we got some books to go. Wait, what? Uh, six uh, verses four through nine. That's where we're going to hang out today. In most of your Bibles, it will have a title right before it called the Great Commandment. Okay? Okay, right, well, I'll re-announce it when we get there. Okay? So, if you all see, our theme this year is Devoted to God. Um, and we're going to dive in, because this is your intro for the weekend. Think of it like you're 5,000 miles above view, where you see everything. And then we'll go deeper tomorrow, um, if you want to think about it like that. Because um, the big thing for us is we oftentimes focus on God like this. God, when can you make that happen? Um, are you going to do this for me? Um, how can you help me in this situation, Lord? What do I get out of it? Y'all notice it's all uh, me focus? Because we, we, we focus on this part of the relationship, from up to down. We focus from God to us, how we receive God's love, how we receive everything in the relationship. Um, but if you realize, you know, taking a little chunk from last year's retreat, which was conversations with God. If you remember anything from that, a conversation takes two to tango. It's a back and forth. A relationship takes two parties. And a good relationship takes a back and forth. So how a relationship with God shouldn't look like this. It should be this this, 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 this. Does that make sense? Because a relationship is reciprocal. It shouldn't be all about what does God do for me? Because then that kind of makes them seem like a genie, right? I know that's the usual metaphor that's used, right? A genie. You know, I get my three wishes, and then, you know, that's good. Um, but the beauty of this is the love doesn't just come from God. We can love God, too. Isn't that a funny concept? And that's what we're exploring. What does it mean to, devote, to be devoted to God just as much as he's devoted to us? Because if you guys didn't know, God doesn't need us. In a theology, we call it God is self-existence. Man, he doesn't need anything to exist. But for some reason, he decided to create a, a bunch of knuckleheads who he knew were going to sin and fall away, and most of the time, not select him. Yet, he so was in love with the idea of us, he went, so I'm going to do this. It's going to be so worth it. Isn't that crazy? So that's God's love. So how do we respond to that? That's what we're doing this weekend. Is how do we respond to what God's done? Because if you look throughout human history, God's the initiator. We go all the way back to Adam and Eve. Because he created Adam and Eve and he started the relationship there. You think of Abraham. Um, which Abram, I'm assuming that's what your namesake is, you know. Uh, God was like, hey, Abraham, I'm going to be your God, and you and your descendants are going to be my people. 
And all Abraham had to say was yes. And then Moses, who was so steeped in Egyptian culture, who didn't even know who this God guy is, um, he just showed up to Moses in a burning bush. And we see over and over again throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament. You know, Jesus is the one that approached his disciples first. Because in the, in the old Jewish style, the rabbi, people pick their rabbi who they wanted to learn from, and then they'll get rejected whether or not they should be a good student or, you know, follow them or not. Instead, Jesus flipped that. It was like, I'm starting a relationship. Come follow me, Matthew. Come follow me, John, James, Peter, Andrew. Like, he flipped the coin. So God is always the initiator of his relationships. So we should respond to that. Um, and I want to stick with Moses, because um, this is where our passage is in uh, Deuteronomy 6. Um, this, this section is called the Shema. Have you, have you all heard that word before? Yeah. It's a, it's a fun word. Um, this was something that was so powerful to the Israel people, to the people of Israel, that God gave them. He said, starting with verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down. And when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hands, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes, and shall write them on the doorposts of your house in your gates. So think of it. So just the simple, hear of Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. That command is that that should be on your heart. You shall diligently give it to your children, which I hope none of you kids have children. Uh, then you're going to talk. When you sit in your house about this, you're going to do it as you walk throughout the world. You're going to do this as you lie down, like when you're going to bed. When you rise in the morning, you should bind it on your hand so it can always be seen by you. It should be between your eyes. And it should be on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. That's what God commanded about just that phrase to these people. Like, this should be something that's very important to you. Because it, like I said, there's a header over it. It says, the greatest commandment. This is something that should be so important to you. And they memorized this. And they would say it all the time. They literally would write it on their doorpost. It was a tradition when you built a house. You would write it on the doorpost for the Jewish people. And if we know anything about the Bible, when it's emphasized, or like when it's said over and over again, it's said for emphasis. Right? Because this, this doesn't... Just stop here, because you guys have probably never heard it in this connotation. You always hear it in the Gospels, right? And it's even more important when Jesus reiterates it, right? And Jesus reiterates it multiple times in each of the Gospels. You know, when someone comes up to him and asks, what is the greatest commandment? The first part of it is our verse. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And what's the next part? In the second. Love your neighbor. Yes. So you can see this is not something that's supposed to be forgotten. This relationship, this love that's reciprocated by what God has done is supposed to be a part of us and supposed to be a part of every fiber of our being. Now, I chose the Mark verse because if you've noticed also throughout all of Scripture is that you'll get some 
when I say it, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, or it'll be love the Lord your God with all your mind and strength, or, you know, one of these is all left out, but Mark 1 includes all four, because you can find all four multiple times. And those four are heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you look at this logo that I made, that I made very abstract, <laughs> you can see the heart, you can see the mind and the brain. You know, the soul is always attributed to a fire, a furnace being lit. And then in scripture, the thing that's attributed to strength is whatever can move a mountain. So I know it's a little abstract, but you can see all of that in just this image. So, this weekend we're going to break these down. Tomorrow morning, Miss Sheila is going to be breaking down art. Then, uh, in the afternoon, Kristen will be taking on soul. Father Michael will be taking on mind. And then, uh, Bishop Clark is going to be joining us and he'll be handling strength. Um, what these four mean, heart, we often think emotion, right? Well, in the ancient world, when the Shema was written, heart meant the core of your being. Does that make sense? Because you know your heart, that's also like the center point for all of your veins and how all of your body runs, right? For the most part. I know the brain is really the central nervous system. You know. We can get into semantics, but the heart is the core of who you are. And that bleeds throughout. So loving your God, loving God from your core. Your soul is the will of your existence. So what you do, what you want to do, what desires you have. The mind is how you, if you all just want to grab a seat, um, the mind is about how you think and how the love of God affects that. Strength is how you use yourself for God. And all these people are going to be jumping in um, later on tomorrow and on Sunday. Now, because um, the intro isn't always long, I want to leave you all with one thing. Um, one of my favorite authors, his name is Greg Ogden, and he's, he's not some famous theologian or, you know, a well-known guy. But he wrote some books because it came out of a need for discipleship in his own church. Um, and he wrote one on the essential commandment. That's, that's another name for loving the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, mind, strength, loving your neighbor as yourself. It's also called the essential commandment. And um, I wanted to share this part from his book. Um, and I'll read it twice. I just want you to, I'm not going to break it down or anything like that. I want this to be the last part where you just meditate on this tonight and think about it. So he asks this question, what should be the focus of our life each day and all of our days? And and so in response to God's invitation to enter a relationship of covenant love, we are called to return that love to God by placing our full affection on him. So worthy is God of our complete devotion that we are to submit our will, which is heart, harness our passions, soul, discipline our thinking, mind, and channel our energy, strength, to his glory. As we do so, other people, all cherished by God, will become our priority. I'll just read that one more time. In response to God's invitation to enter a relationship of covenant love, we are called to return that love to God by placing our full affection on him. So worthy is God, our complete devotion, that we are to submit our will, harness our passions, discipline our thinking, and channel our energy to his glory. As we do so, other people, all cherished by God, will become our priority. So, if you can see with that, loving God channels into the second part of the commandment as well. So that's why we're focusing on the first part this weekend.